All right, YouTube, got a 2004 Chevy Impala SS right here. This is the 3.8, and the heater core is bad. I think it was bad long before I got the car because uh, I went to put stop leak in it and noticed there was already stop leak in it. Uh, and I've had the car for, you know, almost 100,000 miles. So uh, I think this went bad really early on. Somebody patched it with some stop, le stop leak, and that's failed. So I'm getting a drip right under here, right under the glove box. Um, doesn't matter if my uh, it doesn't matter if my heat is on heat or cool I get the drip so dripping right under here you can't see it with the carpet in and it ends up laying like right here um, you can smell it as soon as it starts building up uh, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, replace this heater core it is a hell of a job in this uh, vehicle from what I've seen uh, I know you have to take out uh, basically all of this, all the center console. People recommend taking out the seats. No, uh, the dash, pretty much everything. So we're just gonna we won't, we're gonna watch some YouTube video, videos of our own and uh, just start taking some stuff out and see where the heck we end up. All right, guys, don't really have a step by step here, uh, so we're just kind of tearing stuff up. We know the heater core straight back here behind this um, we uh, popped off this cover right here popped off these two bottom covers next is probably going to be the dash so that this can move and uh, then we'll see where we're at after that all right guys so I've had this dash off uh, several times working on this pass lock system so um, I basically had already broken some tabs and stuff on the dash. So at this point, I just kind of had to, to grab it and pull it off. You do have to make sure that your fuse covers on each side are off. And then you can grab the dash and just kind of yank it off. Uh, after doing that, um, we were able to get rid of this um, kind of like center storage thing here. But you can't just pull it out because it is bolted right here with uh, 9 30 seconds head bolts once you take those out that'll come off and then uh yeah there's more bolts uh, we got to work on getting all this off getting all this disconnected and uh heater core should be back up in here somewhere then we'll pull our carpet back figure out what's going on with this ductwork. go from there all right guys so here's kind of where we are so far uh, these plastic pieces that went down on this side we tried to just kind of bend them back out of the way horrible idea they ended up both snapping eventually from screwing around in here uh, don't really care uh, you guys can leave whatever comments you want this is a commuter car for me it's got 150,000 miles on it uh, nobody rides in this car but me and it's only to get to work and back on the highway so could care less what even goes back on this thing but I do need heat so I I've really wanted to take these seats out and pull the carpet back. Um, my uh, helper has kind of doesn't want to do that. So what we've done is I cut the carpet right down the middle here because you can't see any of this anyway. The console's over top of it. So I cut the carpet and that, that allowed me to pull the carpet back on the seats. I had to put this rug on the carpet because the foam on the bottom of the carpet is soaked because the heater core has been leaking so long. So. Uh, the carpet's out of the way. Um, when I did that, I was able to get to the ductwork. So coming off the bottom here was some ductwork. It comes here, it splits, and goes underneath each seat. Uh, if you start back here, you can pull that ductwork and just yank all this out of the way. Now I'm at this point, and I'm not sure exactly what to do next. I know that you, I know the heater core is back here. And I know you have to drill out these little spots on this box, but I don't know, even after doing that, if I can get this box off with this plastic piece right here in the way, and this plastic piece is, in fact, the entire dash. I can remove it, but it's gonna be a ton more bolts. I'm gonna have to remove the radio. I'm gonna have to remove the um, thermostat controls. So I don't know, I'm gonna drill these out first and see if anything loosens up and if this can come out without removing the dash. All right guys, moving on in the Impala adventure and breaking more shit. So we didn't take the dash off. We tried to get the plastic cover that comes down from this box and pushes the air down into the vents. We tried to get it off 
without removing the dash we ended up breaking the bridge on the dash right here i don't think it's going to be a huge deal but we got that cover off there are tons probably six or eight spots where you have to drill through a plastic rivet but once you get that front air vent box off you're going to reveal brass screws right there there's at least two or three of them under here that i've found so far they are seven 30 seconds we're going to take those off and see if that gets our box off there's also a few spots you can see like here that have to be uh drilled out to get this box off as well they do not want you taking this stuff off all right let's keep going all right y'all moving on now let me tell you i came into this job knowing that this was going to be an insanely stressful uh you know project and it's it, i've had to take a break a couple times kind of scratch my head and come back at it but you know i broke tons of stuff but i went into this job knowing that i was willing to break that stuff and because this is a commuter nobody else rides in it i've told you that if you're not willing to break that stuff i definitely recommend taking it to a professional so right down here in the center these are going to be like this and those things i was telling you you have to drill out they are everywhere like there 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 three on the bottom you have to drill those out then you can get this off i don't recommend trying to take this off unless your dash is off i didn't take my dash off and i broke the bridge in the middle after you get that bottom piece out the, that pushes air back into your lower vents then you're gonna have this there's gonna be brass little brass bolts 730 seconds bolts here 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 and here and you're also going to have spots you have to drill out here 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 i mean there's just stuff to drill out and bolts everywhere after you get that drilled out i don't think you could fit this out with the dash on but since my dash was broke i was able to fit this out i also obviously broke broke it right here pulling on it i don't care guys i'm not putting any of this plastic junk back because I don't care if you can see my heater core sitting here. In fact, I think it looks cool. Um, but the heater core, which we made it to, it's right here, and it's got orange coolant all over it. It's probably, you know, it's obviously been leaking for a long freaking time. Uh, it doesn't seem to be, it's not mounted by anything. That plastic box actually mounted it. Um, and then there's just those two tubes coming out of it, going through the firewall. The um clamps that hold it onto this are on the other side of the firewall so once you get to this point you get you've got this you know your connection is going to be made on the other side uh i'll get this replaced i'm going to dry i'm draining the coolant now let me get this replaced and uh we'll figure out a way to zip tie or mount this up here somewhere where it won't rattle around and uh yeah kind of go from there If I was to do this again, see right now I have the carpet pulled back on the seat, rugs over that because the carpet foam is wet. If I were to do it again, I would probably just remove the seats, pull the carpet back even further so that I could really lay down in here because you're gonna be laying down in here with your back on the edge of the car, head back in there, trying to get to that stuff and it is a pain. All right guys, up here you can see it comes out it's not this connection right here that's for your uh condenser evaporator or whatever for the ac but it's right down below it to the right it's these two hoses right here all right guys to drain the coolant on this o4 impala you've got your radiator right here at the bottom of the radiator down here it's the bottom of the radiator sorry i don't have a light down here right now but you're gonna pull back this piece of plastic and in the, on the bottom corner, facing that way, you're gonna have a plastic drain plug. And that's gonna be a 19 millimeter. If you use a socket and ratchet, you'll be able to thread it right out, pull it the rest of the way out, and it's gonna drain right back here. It's right at the bottom corner of your radiator, facing the back of the car. Here's what it looks like so after you thread it out it's going to feel like it doesn't come all the way out 
It's got these tabs, you just pull it the rest of the way out. All right guys, 04 Impala heater core swap. Uh, we're a week later now. Uh, I hope I haven't forgotten too much. Um, the, the car set all week. I had to let it set for a week with a fan on it to try to dry out some of that foam. It is mostly dry now, way drier than it was. So, um, the new heater core came in. It's uh, here somewhere. Right here. So basically I have to try to get the hoses off the old one now and they are they are kind of down in there. I don't know if you can see that. I, think I showed it to you earlier. See those clamps down there underneath those metal ones? Got to get those off. Got to get those hoses pulled off. Then I can pull the heater core out from the bottom under there. Put the new one through those holes, get the lines connected, and uh, then I think I can put coolant back in and I have to make sure I put my radiator plug back in the bottom. Can't forget about that. And uh, the hardest part is gonna be getting all the plastic and stuff back where it needs to be on the dash so that the air can be routed correctly. I broke some of it, so I'm gonna have to do a lot of taping and um well we'll just do the best we can so yeah move uh, continue on all right guys so i just got the old heater core disconnected i uh, did have one mishap i was kind of uh kind of using these channel locks to get down on these big heavy uh clamps down there and i just barely put my arm here and snapped this off I don't even know what this is, but basically this breather from what looks to be your braking system just goes onto it and it was just super old and brittle. You can see even the line itself is dry rotted and brittle. Um, I'm going to find out what this is and replace it. Uh, I think it's no big deal uh, for the immediate time though. So I just slid this over here out of the way, rot it rotates a little bit. And uh, then there you got this big wiring harness that's in your way. It normally sits right here. So I took it and just pulled it back, rotated that connector, and zip tied it to uh, like this throttle body housing uh, cable mount bracket right here. So zip tied it out of the way. And after you zip tie that, um, you can pretty much get down in there with some channel locks and uh, get those clamps off and those hoses off and now i'm trying to guide the tubes of the old heater core back out these very small holes um and pull it out under the dash up there all right guys it was a bit of a pain but the old one's out let me show you how that went so Right up there are the holes for the old tubes. There's a piece of plastic that oh, is so tightly wrapped around those tubes, I couldn't pull the old tubes out. I had to take a screwdriver, jam it up in between the plastic, and just start twisting it to separate the plastic enough to let the tubes out. So I'm not sure if there was more stuff I was supposed to take off or what, but at this point, I was fully ready to just use that as a pry bar and break whatever plastic I needed to because this is stupid. This job has been nuts, I'm over it, and uh, got the new gasket. I'm guessing this foam gasket is supposed to go right there, uh, so it keeps air from escaping uh, between the, uh, the heater core and that box. So it came with, you know, just came with adhesive, I stuck it on the plastic, I'm about to put the new heater core through those holes. All right, I've got the new ends coming through the firewall. So I'm gonna have to probably have somebody sit down on the floor, hold that from going through, and I'm gonna have to try to put these hoses on. All right, guys, well, the job is done. Um, it actually, going back together, went better than I thought. So I was able to get that inmost inner box back on and use one of the original um, brass screws to hold it on. And then the outer box that's right behind this, 
I was able to put it back in place and I had to find some big plastic screw. I mean, they're metal screws, but they're made to thread into plastic. And beside where you drilled out the cover, there was a spot where you could put a screw back in. So I put a couple screws in. It doesn't take much. It held it. Um, everything's working. I put the cup holder, I put all this stuff back in, the dash back on, all of this stuff back on, and everything seems to work. Um, really cool to see how that uh, heater core gets hot um, from the engine coolant and then the, the air blows through it. Um, really good. So the only thing I didn't mess with was I didn't mess with putting any of the venting back that goes under the seat and back to the passenger or back to the back seat for heat because I don't have anybody that rides in the back. Um, it's a commuter car for me, as I've said a hundred times. So um, I've been trying to add coolant. Uh, and I see the way you're supposed to add the coolant is take the radiator cap off, start the car, let it run, let it get up to temp, turn the heater on so the coolant goes through the heater core, and then let the car run for 10 minutes at uh, operating temp and just keep adding coolant. Um, I should have taken more. I, I couldn't even add quite two gallons. So I'm just going to keep my eye on it. The car didn't overheat. Everything seemed normal there. Um, problem I ran into was when I moved all this stuff out of the way, I broke this little vacuum cap right here. Uh, I called Advance. I called AutoZone. I called O'Reilly's. Nobody was willing to look that part up for me. Um, so I had to find it online and I ordered it. So I'm not going to be able to drive my car for a week and I'm going to need to get these caps out of these hoses, um, which might be fun in itself. But, uh, but yeah, besides that, I was, I was actually able to just set this over and let it suck in the vacuum and, uh, start the car. But, uh, I can't drive the car until I get that vacuum manifold. So was this job... Uh, let's let's put this in a conclusion now was this job fun absolutely not it was horrible how long did it take me uh i did it two different days um sunday and then the next sunday it took me about four hours the first sunday and about three hours um today so about seven hours to do the job um you know if i went back and did it right now i could do it in you know because the dash because the boxes are already drilled out and because I know what I'm looking at, I could do this in two hours, I'm sure. Um, but here is my thoughts on should you do this or not. If you have a new vehicle that you care about the dash, how it looks, breaking things, and, and money's not really an object or you're not super tight on money, I would just take this to somebody who does it all the time or at least is familiar with your vehicle and all the clips and how things come apart and somebody that has patience and will take the time to do it. If you have an older vehicle like me that's a commuter, then yeah, you can jump in and do this yourself if you have any mechanical inclination at all, which was um, my situation and it ended up being a very nice uh, you know, learning um, procedure for me. So there's my thoughts. Um, thanks for riding along with me, guys. See you in the next video.